Hey guys, this is Q's dad, Jay, and I'm going to bring you a little bit more of an advanced topic. So if you've tuned into this channel to get the more basic stuff, this is going to be a little bit more gibberish than you're typically used to. Anyway, I wanted to take you through my sample workflow in Lightroom. And we have actually um, another video that will be coming out that will talk about the performance characteristics that we have. So I have a blank Lightroom catalog. I just did a photo shoot yesterday, a family shoot with some high school seniors. And I'm going to take you through the process beginning to end to kind of show you what that's going to look like. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new catalog. And I have a W drive, which is my work drive. And it's a 960 Evo. Uh, M.2, so it's an extremely fast drive. If you look at the performance video I did, you'll see it doesn't make a ton of difference. You actually don't need an extremely fast drive to do most of what you do in Lightroom. So let's create it. The way that I name it is typically the client or the senior's name, um, the year. Uh, in this case, it would be the graduation year and the high school that they go to and the type of shoot. So this is a senior and uh, family shoot. Right, so that'll put it together. I might even divide it up into two separate catalogs if I don't. I don't do one huge catalog. I tend to find that things get a little bit lost. It also inhibits my archive process because I like to move stuff around between my work drive and my storage drive and just drag and drop the folder without having to export from a catalog. So I stay away from one giant catalog. I do think it's the best way to do that. So let's go ahead and create that photo. Um, you see my daughter was playing Grand Theft Auto here. We'll close that down so that's not impacting anything. Okay, so now I'm going to come in here. Now, typically people use the file and then the import photos and videos. In fact, Lightroom can set up the minute you plug in a drive. It's, it's ready to go, and you can see all the photos I have in here. If you look over here, go over to the pictures directory. Now I'm shooting on a 4K monitor, I apologize if this prints a little small for you, but it essentially defaults to the last one that you do in there. And I tend to get in a hurry, so I tend to just import it in. I also find this is a little bit slower. On my old machine, I would import directly off the camera. But what I did this time was I took and purchased a new USB uh, I'm sorry, a new SanDisk uh, Extreme Pro UHS, not USB 2, SDHC card, and it runs at about 300 megabytes per second. If you look at the um, USB, USB, USB specification, say that really quick, you'll see that it runs at about 5 gigabits per second. So divide that by 8, and you'll come out that they're roughly equivalent to each other as far as the, the speed goes. Again, this is uh, megabytes because it's a capital B. So the import time's pretty quick. I also paired it with this USB driver, uh, USB reader, and this is a USB 3.0 reader. Um, the 3.1s weren't out and I'm not sure it would make much of a difference given the card speeds that were uh, that are out there today that you can actually leverage. So I went from a compact flash much much slower in the tens of megabits per second or gigabits per second. Megabits per, in the tens of megabits per second and I went to the higher end card and now I'm going to transfer via this USB reader, which should be much quicker also. So let's move that off. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of here. And I'm going to go into the USB disk itself. And here's the files that are in there. And I'm also going to call up that folder that we just did, the client name, high school senior. And I'm just going to go ahead and create a new directory on here called Photos. Now, Lightroom catalogs things in, by year and all the rest of that kind of stuff. But I'm simply going to drag and drop these across. And what I'll do is I'll start a timer here. I'll hit Start. So you can see that it's 269 photos total in the series. Uh, we're at about 5% complete already. I'll get ready to tear this stop in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up for you guys and cut to the chase so that you can see the end result as far as time goes. So we're coming up on the end here. It looks like we're going to be just a little above 
maybe two minutes and yeah about two minutes and 12 seconds and that's done let me close this out here and you can see now we have these all moved in here and then I'm going to turn around and I'm going to do a file import photo and video and in this case I'm going to go to the uh, local drive here the work drive and go to current photo shoots and go to the uh, client name folder that I had before and then go to photos and then I'm simply just gonna just gonna add them in at this point so if you look at the add-in you know this will take maybe 20 seconds tops probably even less than that um, I'm not actually timing at this point but you can see the percent meter going fairly quick in there now a couple things about the way that I shoot and it helps support my workflow I know they say get it right in camera and compositionally I'll try to do that um, you know we're downtown we're in the middle of people you can't always just wait around for things to clear out perfectly so I do tend to Photoshop I tend to shoot for the most detail that I can get uh, I will also tend to overexpose from time to time by comparison because I'm gonna I'm gonna add contrast and shadows and a stylistic look that's in there now once I get these loaded in I can go ahead now you can see if I was to turn around and zoom in on this you can see it's fairly quick but you can see it still see it's loading down here at the bottom to finalize the preview and you can see it's a little out of focus but now it's in focus so as I go through and review these if I want to turn around and do these at any speed whatsoever you'll see that this loading can take several seconds and even let me uh, call up the task manager here um, and you can see even with performance and let's go to CPUs um, let me go ahead and I will go into one of these others blowing up and you can see it's using quite a few of the cores they're not at max but it's actually going across the images trying to make that happen and that one is actually a little blurry at this point so what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna turn around and unzoom on this and I will do a uh, let's see library previews and I'm gonna build one-to-one -one previews so let me call up my phone again here and I'm gonna go ahead and reset the timer and I'm gonna hit start one more time on build one-to-one -one previews and you can see it says do you want to build one or build all we'll go ahead and build all and in the upper right hand corner this is going to take a bit more time so typically at night once I come home from a photo shoot I'm going to load this stuff onto the computer I'm going to hit build all and I'm going to go to bed now ultimately or I'm going to go do something else or I could go and edit other things I do find once I get it loaded I don't like those long breaks in time where I have to wait so you'll see that I will try to get those in between steps as quick as possible so I can go from one to the other to the next without having to sit there and wait for everything to load up but once we get this loaded up and I'll go ahead and fast forward to the end here for you I'll talk about what the next steps are Okay, we're coming up on 20 minutes here, so I figured we still got a little bit to go, but I go ahead and overlap some of this time while it processes to talk about philosophy and some of the things that we're measuring here. If you look at the utilization here, you can see from time to time the CPU will get up in that 90, 100 percentile range. Most of the time it's floating around 50 or 60 at the top, sometimes dropping even lower. I'm assuming that's when it's issuing writes out for the previews at this point if you look at the GPU here you can see we're not really taxing it it's a 50 degrees Celsius 
the actual utilization runs 20, you know, sometimes hits up to 70%. So they are using the GPU a bit, but not a ton. Again, nothing's really been taxing. I am running multiple programs here, so it's probably slowing down the overall process. I shoot raw for all my stuff, and you can see each one of the files is 44 to like 39 meg. You would assume raw would be um, pretty static, but I guess they use some kind of lossless compression to uh, compress some of the bits at least and get a little bit smaller size from time to time. So I do shoot in raw. Uh, as you can see in this image behind me, once I have my setting, and I tend to shoot a little overexposed because I like the way it cleans up the skin and, and I don't have to deal with poor texture. Obviously I'm doing upfront portraits or beauty work, I would change that, but this allows me to be a little lazier in cleaning up skin and stuff like that. I actually will bring that back and post a bit from time to time, depending, but it also allows me to have more detail in the shadows and I can turn around and be more aggressive on my contrast and my different types of split toning and things like that without losing much detail there. So you can see on this import, um, you can see we're using all 18 cores. Um, I think that was 16 cores, I'm sorry. Eight, eight cores, 16 threads. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it will peak from time to time, then it will drop down, then it'll peak. It's not exactly making great utilization of the GPU. Um, it's not actually using the disk all that much getting a higher capacity disk or higher speed disk is not really going to pay off as much as what you'd think it would during the Lightroom process. In fact, uh, my 850 uh, Samsung runs a little bit faster than the 960 does, which is surprising. And then the CPU itself, we've got 16 cores to work with. It does take advantage of them, but I would imagine there's no single bottleneck and going down to four cores, you're not going to turn around and you know, be less than half. It's a combination of all those factors together. In that uh, video that I did comparing it to my old editing machine, you'll see there that there's a huge difference in the import time, but I'm changing multiple factors at once. So check that one out. It'll be in the upper right or upper right hand corner and you can check out and see what the total performance times in. Sometimes it's over 50% and cutting the time in half. So let's close that out. All right, um, that's it. Once I get my settings set in for a particular shoot area and lighting situation, I don't vary it. That's gonna make it much, much easier for me to modify it and post and do batch operations. If I monkey with each one or if I use on auto, I'm not shooting in manual, those are gonna vary all over the place and I'm gonna have to do things one at a time. And even if I'm doing a series, I'll find similarly lit areas as I move along and go from there. And I'm not taking a ton of shots in each area, and that's purely the style of shoot and the type of sale that I'm doing. I don't want to turn around and do 200 photos of one dress with all kinds of different things and one kind of a setting with tons of different poses because parents just simply aren't going to buy 16, 20 different photos of the same dress, same scenery and everything else. So you really have to kind of be fairly quick about it. And uh, this shoot, and I only have part of the shoot on here, was about a five hour shoot. So everybody tends to get a little tired. There's two girls, there's a family, everything else. So I gotta kinda keep them engaged and not have them shoot and shoot and shoot. I'll shoot more at the beginning, but as they gather more confidence and they kinda understand what works and what doesn't, the shoot begins to kinda pick up speed. And I might shoot eight to 10 to 12 each. I have, I guess what the industry would call, money poses and those are poses that I know families are going to like no matter what and they're going to buy and then I'll add in some experimentation or if they have really great eyes I'll focus some close-ups on their face or you know if there's some really unique outfits I'll do some stuff where they're kind of moving and twisting in that but I would say 80 percent of my shoot is going to contain stuff that I know sells to 99 percent of my clients I used to be <laughs> a lot more creative until I found out that the creative stuff, you might sell one or two additional ones because they've never seen that or it looks really cool, but they're always going to gravitate back in senior photos to the ones that kind of remind them of their childhood or, you know, or classic poses that they've seen. And uh, it's, it's an unfortunate part of the business 
but it is what makes you more effective and, and allows you to get a higher average sale. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward to the end here so you don't have to watch the rest of this and I'll take you through the rest of the workflow. Oh, before I do that, one quick thing is I'm gonna turn around and I'm going to go over this entire series now that the, the thumbnails are rendered one-to-one. -one. You could actually go through and do accept and rejects before we do this entire rendering process. The problem is, is that if you have to zoom in to see do you want to keep it, then it's going to be a much slower process for you. So for me, because I can always just throw one on at night before I get to bed, it works like a champ and I can kind of go from there. Now, uh, we're sitting at 26 minutes. The advantage of doing the culling first is that you have to render less photos. And if you cut that in half, then you would probably cut that time down to 13 or 14 seconds, or 13 to 14 minutes, sorry. <clears throat> and it would be a much quicker process. So I've actually talked myself to the end here. Uh, we'll start here in just a couple seconds. Okay, here we are, they're done. And we're just under 27 minutes to finish that whole thing up. So now, what I'm gonna do to make my culling much more aggressive is I'm gonna highlight everything from beginning to end. And you have to call up the group mode here. And I'm essentially going to reject every one of them. And so I'm gonna start from the assumption that I am going to reject all of the photos. Now, I'm not gonna do the family photos because I think that takes more time because you have to consider multiple people and sometimes the image may not be great but you like this face from this shot and this hit person had their clothes or their, their eyes closed during this particular shot so you may photoshop heads and things like that so i want to make sure that i keep more family photos than what i typically would for group photos but i'll start with just the two sisters here and go through now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go backwards i'm not going to go forwards as i reject or accept these and there's a reason for that is a lot of times you're dialing in your lighting at the beginning you're having them shoot something and maybe their eyes were closed and then you know you might shoot another thing and you see something in the back of the sensor where you kind of go or the, the LCD where you kind of go well that's not exactly what I want so you tend to shoot until you get the shot right so what I'd rather do is pick up the right shot at the end of the series and then I could just quickly skip over the other ones where, that were the setup for those and going backwards allows me to do that more aggressively and faster than what I would do if I was going forward so we're gonna start here and only if I really like them will I unselect it so I think this is one that I might crop up um, and and keep in mind I tend to overshoot on my photos so I have options for cropping because I don't know if they're gonna buy an 8x10 a 5x7 I kind of shoot it so that I have the maximal available options and even close-up shots where I would zoom in unless I'm looking for something specifically I might shoot it as a full body because they might be that type of client it's not like you're working for a buyer or a marketing agency where they have a very clear vision or consistent vision of what they want so I'm gonna go ahead and Unselect, and I'm going to go through and unselect these family stuff at the end here so I don't accidentally uh, delete them uh, when I have to actually deliver the proofs to the client tonight in the sales session. And I'll go back and I'll handle those outside this video. Okay, now don't worry about this is actually a little dark, right? So here's the shot that I wanted. It was a little dark, so I skipped it. I still like that, so I'm going to go ahead and unselect it. I like the other one better. Um, now, they were goofing around here, and the one grabbed the other girl from behind, and they thought it was funny. Their mom thought it was funny, so I leave those type of shots in more for humor during the review process because they'll laugh about it, and it'll put them in a good mood. Um, I think this one's okay. It's a little off-center. I'm going to go ahead and center it later. Um, she's looking a little too far off there. Um, this looks a little too posy. Let's see. I'm going to reject that. And I'm going to reject that. Okay. Um, better. Better. Good. Wow, well, I don't. I think she looks a little hunchy here, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it rejected. That was a framing issue. That was lighting. 
Um, now, I overexposed this. I'm going to put in a certain type of finish to it. So I'm going to go ahead and keep it because I like the way that it looks. Um, I do like the landscape crop over the other one. I like this one. And you can see, even though we have the one-to-one -one previews, it's still uh, rendering in the background a bit. Now keep in mind that I have this in library mode. If you don't have it in library mode and you have it in develop mode, it will actually go slower. So you want to make sure you select library mode. And then if you want to do a quick look at, hey, if I just simply adjusted down the exposure a little bit, what would it look like? You can do that really quickly. All right. So I like it. Let's undo that one. Um, that's a test shot. A little weird shadows. I'll have to, I think I'll reject that one a little better. Not a fan. Eyes closed. Um, looking a little, they were getting tired at this point, so we had some unusual things. Now I notice she has like the insert here and it's showing, and I can Photoshop that off fairly quickly. Um, don't unreject stuff where you hate doing what you have to fix. So if it's like it has bad hair flyaways or one eye is bigger than the other and it's noticeable and you hate doing that, just go ahead and reject it. You know, with this photo shoot, I'm going to end up with over 130 photos for them to pick from. They're going to order, order 20 to 30, so that extra little shot isn't going to make a difference. Um, that one's okay. Um, nope. Nope. Actually, I kind of like that one. I'll keep that one. It's her sister. Too far, looking too far up. A little bit better. I wasn't a big fan of this outfit. Neither was her mom when she saw it. So I'm going to tend to kind of gloss over these. But I'll keep a couple in just because they'll have a different. So they'll go, I want one of that outfit, at least one. And that kind of helps round out a collection if you're going to order you know from a collection that gives you another potential shot i had to kind of overcome the sun it's a little too flashy here but i can bring that back fairly quickly and that one was just yeah it's okay all right i was doing some metering shots let's go through these i like that one not as much a fan of that one It's good profile shot will mix in a couple different variations that one's decent not a fan better and I'll probably wind up cropping this one in I like the way her face looks there and then a little smile okay I'm not gonna make you watch the rest of me kind of going through this um, I might do another video on what I consider when doing it so I'll speed this section up and put some music in and you can take a look at me kind of go through the rest of these. Okay, I'm going to stop here for a second. You'll notice that I'm kind of going through some of these other ones that were just test shots. If I was being really diligent, I would go ahead and delete these in camera so I didn't have to deal with them in post. I do shoot a backup, so I have two cards simultaneously. So I'd have to delete it off both, or at least make sure I was deleting it off the raw format because the other one's saved in JPEG. So for me, it takes me that little extra second to kind of go through and reject it. It goes pretty quick. Okay, back to high speed here. What a wonderful world. I'm going to go ahead and stop here. I did shoot these with the intention of checking them for black and white, and I just thought it would be a better way to kind of put them out there and, and get something different. So I'm going to go ahead and go into uh, black and white here, and let's go to black and white, and then I'm going to go ahead and up bump the contrast just for the heck of it. All right, maybe even a little bit more and down the exposure so I'm not quite as bad 
So yeah, I kind of like that. It's a little busy, uh, but not too bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and just keep that in as a reference point for later on to let myself know that uh, this was my black and white version. Okay, let's go back and speed things up again. And I'm gonna go back into library mode before I do it. And we'll go from there. And you can see here, I like this pose a lot. Her hand is cut off. Um, in this case, because I only have a few of these ballerina shots, I'm going to go ahead and, and keep this around just in case. Okay, let's stop again here. Now, I tend to mix in serious looks or uh, what they call RBF resting bitch face and uh, with some smiles and I tend to do more smiles than RBF and some people can pull off serious and some people can't. Uh, one of the sisters here can't, she kind of looks a little worried, kind of a little pissed off, a little disgusted <laughs> all at the same time and so I'm going to pay particular attention to those and go ahead and eliminate those if I think they're anywhere near uh, where I would consider unacceptable, although occasionally she does nail some really good shots. If I have a person who I know the serious look just doesn't work for, and typically I will have identified that at the shoot and just quit asking to take them. But if I didn't, I'm going to be more aggressive at kind of hunting those down and getting rid of them. <laughs> Okay, let's stop on this one real quick and take a look. I like her. Um, I don't like the shadows that were on there, and that probably was a test warm-up shot, but I ended up getting a good photo anyway. The nice thing is you can lift the shadows fairly quickly inside of Photoshop or just change the exposure a bit and get it back. So it's sometimes worth just stopping real quick and see if you can save the photo if it's a particularly good photo or one that you just like. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop here again. Now, what's nice about ballet, gymnastics, and I shoot a lot, ton of gymnast, gymnasts from the Olympic level all the way down to the beginning, is as you start to understand form and things like that, you really wanna take a look at it because parents become kind of hypersensitive to form and what the judges look like. And even though it may look cool from a photographic perspective, it may not fit. So this is a double stag in gymnastics. Uh, I think it's called Deer is Leaping, or I forget the name of it, inside of uh, ballet. Uh, obviously, she's a ballet slash jazz dancer instead. But if you look at the feet, it kind of has that pattern of toe points. If you look at these previous ones, her, her face looks good, but it just doesn't match the proper form. Um, here, I thought she was a little aggressive at it. Um, that's a different style, but uh, I just don't think it has that great of a look to it. Um, and then this is poor form here. Great, again, great facial expression. If I zoom in a little here, it has a fantastic facial expression. Um, I, I don't know how serious she is from a competition perspective. I might save that just in case. I'm pretty sure they'll disregard it. Okay, let's speed it up again. Now I'm going to stop it again at this point. Um, I can kind of see that one of the sisters had a better day as far as being, you know, more photogenic and kind of catching on with modeling and stuff like that. You do have to kind of be careful to weight it so that one sister doesn't have all the shots and the other sister has just, uh, you know, tons of them. So I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive with her because she tends to be nailing a few more of the shots than her sister and had more outfits, et cetera, et cetera. So um, you'll see me start to get a little bit more aggressive with her. Okay, we'll stop again here. I ended up liking this shot. You can see my camera stamp, my camera stand down here in the lower right-hand corner. You can see this lady behind her. But I like her facial expression. I like her body pose and the way the pants are hanging. So I'm going to keep this because I know this next one, I have a shot without it. I can Photoshop that person in there. I can manually clone it out. 
but I think I just, I like this one better, but I'm gonna keep this one too, just in case. All right, let's go back to the uh, sped up version. I'm correcting these just to see if I didn't blow the shot. And unfortunately, the light switched on me. I didn't look back at my camera. I try not to chimp too much on the back of the LCD, but I just wanna see if I can dial this back a little bit and save these shots because I do like this outfit in this setting. Um, I don't recommend doing this. I recommend this in a, a different phase, but sometimes you gotta see whether you just, you blew it completely and give up before you try to go back and rescue it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop here for a second because a lot of times I'll find photos when I upload this first sales session, I don't post process everything. I really post process one or two photos just from, from my salesperson to talk through what we're gonna do. She pulls up the before, she pulls up the after, say, look, we got rid of these blemishes, we changed the toning, we thinned her out here, we made this dress more flowy, etc. If I really like a shot, I'm gonna go ahead and mark it with the five. So later on, I can just go filter to my handful of favorite shots and uh, quickly edit those, you know, and it's a quick edit. It's two, three minutes per shot just to get it put together. All right, back to the regular time frame. The colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, are also on the faces of people going by. I'm gonna go ahead and stop here again too. Sorry, I just probably should go all the way through this and talk about it. But here, I kind of remembered off the cuff of my head here that uh, I had taken two different shots and sometimes I'll kind of go back and forth to kind of see which one I like and uh, go ahead and pick the one at that point. Sometimes I don't want to go backwards so essentially what I'll do is is go ahead and unreject all three or four of them and then turn around in the next phase kind of call all three up at the same time in the same window so I can kind of compare them. But in this case I think I could do it with just those two. I kind of like this shot too, but I don't want to do multiple shots of the same setting for the ones I'm going to Photoshop, but I will unreject it. Okay, back to regular pace. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop here. This again is one of the pictures I like a lot. It kind of shows off her intense stare. Uh, and kind of a different look for her. I also liked one back here. Yeah, I kind of like this one too. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark this and then I'll have to find another one for the other sister. All right, almost done here. What a wonderful world. Okay. We're getting to the beginning of the shoot. At the beginning of the shoot, I'll teach the models how to pose. Um, I kind of let them do their own thing just to find out their personality. The first 10 or 15 shots are usually a little rough and I almost consider them a throwaway roll, but I'll, I'll a roll, a throwaway versions. And I'll show them the back of the camera fairly quickly so they can kind of see what they look like, what it's doing, um, and they'll make adjustments in their mind on what they like and they don't like, and they get better as they go along. So you'll see I end up rejecting a lot of these initial ones because they just look a little stiff or their expressions are a little overdone or they haven't figured out what they like or what they don't like. Okay, we're just about wrapped up. You can see one of the things that I use off here sometimes just as some fill light is a little fong diffuser and a little speed light with a radio trigger. And uh, it's in the scene, but I'll end up cropping it out uh, or I'll just make it a five by seven by default. Um, I think we've got rid of most of them. Let me just check that family pictures at the end to make sure I didn't screw up and accidentally keep those rejected. So now what you can do is you can go to photo and you can go down to delete rejected photos or you can press control backspace, kind of your choice. But, oops, I did the wrong thing there. Uh, photo, delete rejected. 
Okay, and I physically get rid of them. I, I just don't even want them anymore because I've got enough good shots. I'm rarely, if ever, going to use them again. Uh, you can see we deleted 103 out of the 267. 150 is still pretty high, but it's two physical different types of locations. It's two girls. It's uh, girls together pictures and it's family pictures all in one. So we ended up with about 150 more than I want to put with my assistant uh, to go through the sales session, but it's probably good enough. So I'll go ahead and delete these from disk. Now I will tend to keep around the little card just in case uh, something happens, but my guess is they won't be able to narrow these down to less than 50 or 60 photos anyway, and more isn't better sometimes, it's just more. I was kind of impressed her first shot here actually looked pretty good, um, and I like the little moped that we borrowed, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep that one in there. So that's it for the basic parts here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and look, and you can see, now I'm gonna switch into develop, that I've turned around and probably underexposed this just a little bit for my taste. So I'm going to pull out the shadows a little bit. I might bump the exposure a bit. And then on the PC, and unfortunately guys I don't know Mac, but Shift Control C allows me to kind of copy everything. And then I can select that entire series and turn around and go to the uh, grid mode right so I can see multiple and then I can shift control V to all of them at the same time now you could also just stay in develop and then as you go through them you just would hit shift control V on each one to make the adjustment automatically um, here on the next set I can see I'm probably a little overexposed and so I'm gonna bring that back just a little and I like that glow although I'm not a fan of uh, her um, hair flyaways that's gonna cost me some work there so I'll go ahead and do this and the reason I like kind of doing it here is it lets me see it to say did it really do what I wanted it to do and sometimes I can pull back the highlights a little or maybe be a little bit more aggressive because the Sun does change a little bit in there so here um, again too dark I probably could have taken the other uh, set, but let me go ahead and just lift the shadows here and change the exposure just a little bit. I don't want to go too overexposed. You can see the curve here is pretty well exposed, but I'll go ahead and copy that. Um, then I should be able to just go from each one from here and out and just go ahead and shift control V and you can see it's moving pretty quick. You don't even have to wait for it to go through. You can just go to the next ones each time. Uh, again, because I kept my exposure fairly constant, this should be a fairly fast process uh, to do. And this one I probably won't remove the background from because I like that uh, uh, little girl there. Oh, I went too far. I buffered too far. I like that little girl kind of running away, so I'll probably make that part of her senior picture if she likes it. Now, let's go to these. And again, I can see I had actually copy pasted some of the stuff in. That's where it should have been. Um, I should have checked, I didn't. And so consequently, I didn't have the best of exposure, but her skin looks flawless. And we'll go through each one of these. Now there, I think it went a little too far. And I think that's probably why um, the sun probably shifted at that point and we weren't quite where we wanted. So I like these. Uh, I think if I went to that other one, it would go, yeah, see it would go a little bit too low there. Right there looks good to me. All right. And let me see if the sun's back to a normal spot again because we don't want her completely white, but not completely back. So right around there is probably good. And again, I'm not monkeying with a lot of stuff. I don't monkey with contrast. I don't monkey with, it's really just exposure and shadows and highlights to kind of modify these so that we can get to a point where it's reasonable. And then all the rest of the effects I'm gonna do in Photoshop 
only on the ones that they order. So that saves me a ton of time. All right, I'm not gonna make you sit through the rest of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just continue on this process and I'll speed it up. All right, I'm going to slow down here for just a second for you. Now, I noticed that I had several pictures that were kind of close to the same, not, not exactly. Uh, and I'm going to use that N key, which is the survey mode, to kind of get these up side by side. And I just want to take a look at them real quick to see do I have something that maybe isn't as good as what I thought it was? And I'm not a fan of the one in the middle here. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Then I'm going to turn around and grab these next three and compare them side by side. And I really think this one on the left's pretty weak by comparison. So if I notice a lot of repetition, I will go through this quick survey mode just to see. Yeah, like this one here isn't nearly as good. Um, I may end up straightening these up. Uh, I typically tend to shoot straight and then rotate and crop. Here I decided to give a little lift of it just because of the geometry to see what it would look like and I kind of like it. So I'm going to get rid of that particular one there. All right. Okay, we'll go back to the normal speed here. What a wonderful world. Well, we didn't get very far on that one. So I will, I will point out that I like different things myself, but sometimes I can't predict whether certain people will like things where they're looking away at the camera, looking toward. If I have both shots, I'll keep them in, though, even though they're very similar. Um, some like only smiles, some like only serious faces, some like a mixture. So again, if I, I don't get a good impression, and I do let them look at the back, and I kind of look at what they like and they point to and if they tend to be pointing to smiles most of the time I'll tend to reject more serious looks uh, here we have a little hair kind of coming across the face um, to me that's a little distracting to some people they like that little bit more natural look and here we had her pull the hair off her neck so she has a little bit more room if I was submitting this for a magazine I would only keep more of the final version or maybe this one and had had probably been reshot at that point to eliminate the hair too with the same look but again for seniors it's a it's a different animal altogether okay back to high speed it's interesting I'll go ahead and stop here again I had not rejected this initially I actually had accepted it and when I went back and looked the second time it was like eh, I've got a lot better shots of her now that I'm going back the, the advantage of going backwards and then forwards is you kind of get a view of all of them and then you come back they're fresh in your mind and you kind of go okay I'm gonna delete those so let's speed it up again in fact I probably won't make you sit through the rest of this um, I'll just go ahead and cut to the next part and and really what that is is the last part is I'm going to go in to the library function here and I'm going to put on a filter uh, and I'm going to do greater than or equal to five stars okay and that's going to give me my photos that I want to edit and here I kind of was debating between this one or this one and gosh I still can't decide um, I think I'm going to go with I think I'm going to go with the other one, so I'll go ahead and hit zero here. So now I have the set that I'm going to go. I'm going to highlight all these uh, from beginning to end. And I'll go ahead and hit edit in uh, Photoshop. And I do some time tests in the other one so you can kind of see how fast this goes. Uh, it takes, again, less than half the amount of time that I have. If I already had Photoshop loaded, it would come up almost immediately. In fact, let me do that just for the heck of it. Let's go into the Photoshop. Okay, so I'll position on there because I'm recording a little bit less than my entire screen. So now let me do an edit in Photoshop and I'll go ahead and keep a timer here.
30 some odd seconds. I actually didn't hit my timer when I did it, but I counted out loud in my head while we're watching it. And uh, we're all ready to go. So I'm gonna let you go at this point. I'll do the edits and the final cleanups on everything. And then I'll turn around and show you what the final photos look like just in a collage at the end of this. So here it comes and we'll join you in the uh, next section. This is Jay signing out and I'll see you next time. Bye. Myself. What a wonderful world.